International cooperation in space goes back long before the end of the Cold War. We're building up drugs. In 1975, the Soviet Soyuz and American Apollo crews docked in space and met. And lift off. Then for the past two decades, the International Space Station became a permanent home to humanity from Russia and the West. It's hard to overstate how much they've truly trusted and relied on each other. This project, the way it was designed in the 90s, um, it was uh, designed to be interdependent because of the technological uh, architecture. Over the years, seven Canadian astronauts have visited. Chris Hadfield even commanded it. When Russia first invaded Ukraine, cosmonauts and astronauts vowed to stay united. But since then, Russian crew members have made patriotic gestures. Despite tensions, Moscow and Washington just signed a new deal to continue flying to the station. But this week, Russia's new space agency boss says he wants out, possibly as soon as 2024. NASA says Moscow later clarified that it will only leave once it finishes building its own dedicated Russian space station. We can be pretty sure that that will take at least five years. Sanctions and war only make that even more difficult for an increasingly isolated Russia. In any case, even the Americans want to mothball the aging ISS in the coming decade, too. It is 100% possible this is all just fluster, and they have every intention of continuing their efforts with the National Space Station. And Moscow is unlikely to find a new partner in China either, both for technological and political reasons. The biggest benefit for the National Space Station was that it was a diplomatic tool. I don't know what will replace it? If and when Russia does leave, our utopian ideal of international cooperation could float off into space. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London.